Hey guys. So today I wanted to do an entire canteen collection video for you. Uh, yesterday I made a video and showed you 30, about 36 of my engraved and named and marked canteens. But this is going to be an entire canteen collection video. I've got them all out here in my, uh, my man cave. I can't wait to show you guys. I hope you like it and everything. Uh, if you're new to my channel, please uh, consider subscribing. Uh, I make you know military collection videos and military history videos and everything. And I'd love to have you as a subscriber. So please, you know, subscribe, like, comment, and share. And uh, I can't wait to show you guys what I got in here. So come on, let me show you. Let me know what you think. Here we go. This is my entire canteen collection. It's been uh, almost two years since I made a, a whole entire canteen collection video. It was in December 2019. And at that time, I had 69 canteens. And I've actually got 95 right now in my collection. I've added so 26 in the past year and nine months or so. But um, I'm real excited to show you guys what I have here. And, uh, you know... There's so many different, you know, uh, variations and different uh, setups and stuff with canteens and stuff with their cups and covers and everything. But, um, you know, I consider myself a completist. Basically, you know, if I have a canteen, I'd like a cup and a cover for each one. And I'm still working on that. Um, I just like to have, you know, complete sets, if that makes sense. Um, and actually, what I'll tell you about my collection here is, like I said, I have 95 total. They're all here on the ground. Except I've got four of them right over here that are kind of attached to some setups I got going on. So, of the 95, I have 28 that are World War One, I. I have 60 that are World War Two, and I have 7 that are post-World War Two. And um, I'll kind of pan here the collection and just kind of show you what I got. You know, some of them are dented up, some of them have cups, some are bloated. Um, again, yesterday I made a video showing the ones that are, you know, named and, and engraved and etched and unit marked and different things. So I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail individually with all these because this video would probably last four hours. But anyways, I'm just kind of panning here and show you guys, um, you know, what I've got going on. I do have some extra covers and cups, which I'm going to, you know, partner them, pair them up with some of these up here. But, um, as you see, you know, I've got some, um... You know, World War One covers, World War Two, post World War Two, and um, you know, I just I love this stuff. And um, a lot of you guys that have been following me know that I really like helmets. You know, I've got 130 helmets, and um, I like canteens a lot too. I like just about everything, but I really like canteens. You know, because I just I just think of you know different uh just different thoughts come to my mind. I'm a real in depth thinker, and I just think about you know, just like with anything, I guess, but, you know, what soldier used this canteen, or, you know, or used these canteens? Where were these canteens and cups and covers, I mean, where where were they at? What other countries were they in, you know? And, and uh, a lot of times, I just, you know, think about maybe what the soldier was thinking about. You know, a lot of times, if you think about it, they would run out of water, you know, and I just couldn't imagine, you know, not having access to water or something to drink, you know? And uh, I just think, you know, about all the all the guys that were just so thirsty, and they had a canteen, but, you know, just unfortunately it was it was dry, and they were waiting on, you know, water to be sent up and other, you know, food rations and supplies and stuff. So, you know, I just really think in depth about stuff like that, you know. And I'm so thankful for all the men and women that have served, you know, and sacrificed and everything so that, you know, um, I could be free, my family, you know, we could be free. Uh, you know, it just really humbles me and everything when I think of stuff like that. But, um, you know, I know a lot of people might would see my collection and would think, man, he's got too much, you know. But really, if you think about it, once you really start collecting stuff, you have to study it like a science if you really want to know it. And like I said, there's, you know, there's different eras that canteens were made. There's different companies that made them. There's different uh, characteristics of the canteens. And, you know, different setups. And, uh, you know, as they, you know, wore out or, or damaged or had to be replaced, they would be. And, uh, you know, after a war ended, then they would be re reissued, repurposed for the next war and then the next. And, you know, then a lot of these went out to the civilian market and were used for Boy Scouts and camping and different things. But, um, like I said, so, if, again, if you just look, there's just so many different colored covers here. 
So just for example, you know, some of the different variations that you could find is you might have a World War I canteen, a World War II cup, and a post-World War II cover. Or you might have, you know, a World War I canteen and cup and a World War II cover. Or you might have a World War II canteen and a World War II cover, but you'll have a World War I cup. And it just excites me and stuff whenever I, I see a canteen because I like to look at the makers and the dates, the characteristics. And again, hopefully it's got a cup and cover with it. And it's just so interesting how, you know, things get switched out and replaced and everything. And, and it's also special, you know, whenever it's it's got the soldier's name engraved on it or their laundry number or the countries they served in or the units they served with. You know, and all that adds to the excitement of in the history of that particular item. And, um, you know, a lot of times we say, man, if, if only these items could talk. And a lot of them, a lot of them do, you know, if they're detailed, you know, they have information on them. But you got to be careful, though, uh, you know, because some stuff could be, you know, altered or changed and faked. But um, so you always want to buy the item and not the story. But, you know, if you can get paperwork from the family or get the item directly from the veteran himself or herself, you know, that's even more special. But, um... Again, you know, I just I just think about all the soldiers, you know, and 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 that would have used these items, uh, you know, these canteens and even the other items in my collection, you know, and um, I just imagine, you know, some of these soldiers just sitting around, maybe in a foxhole somewhere in another country, or sitting on a beach somewhere, you know, maybe in a in a, a downtime in a battle, maybe where there's not a lot of fighting going on, just kind of lull in the battle, you know, in a soldier or you know or sailor or marine you know just sitting with his buddies you know just taking a sip of water just taking a drink you know just you know thanking god that you know they're still alive and everything and just thinking about all they've been through or maybe what they might be about to go through just the thoughts that we going through their mind you know as they're you know taking a drink of water you know thinking about home and everything and their family and and, and wanting to get back home you know and getting back to you know life and everything outside of war um, and then, you know, you think about, there could be even guys, you know, that in, in the middle of a battle, you know, they, I mean, they might take, want to take a quick drink of their canteen and stuff. So just makes you wonder, you know, the history of these particular canteens here. And like I said, who, who had them, you know, hanging off their, you know, their pistol belt or, you know, whose hands they were in. Again, uh, some of these might've been used, uh, two, three different soldiers. You know, if you got a World War One canteen, more than likely, it was used probably in World War II and maybe even after. So some of these canteens might have changed hands or soldiers three or four or five times. You never know. But um, I don't want to keep you guys too much. But um, like I said, I just wanted to share this with you. Um, if you haven't already, please check out my video from yesterday. Um, and, you know, and just let me know what you think. And, um, I mean, hopefully I can get cups and covers for all of these here. You know, it's definitely a work in progress. But um, as most of you guys have been watching me, I actually keep inventory of pretty much everything. I got uh, stuff saved on my uh, computer and everything. And all of these items I get, I tag them. I get like a yard sale type tag. And I'll write a description of what the item is. And I'll write what I paid for it. And then I'll, I have a number system. So I have all my World War I canteens numbered 1 through 28. And on the system, I'll have you know I'll write a number on the tag, and it'll correspond with the information on my computer. And I'll put you know information about that canteen if it's named, or if it's got a dent in it, or a mark, or a specific cap, or if it has a cup, or it doesn't, or a cover. Same thing with World War II and other canteens. I do that with my helmets and uniforms, bayonets, uh, just most of my items. That way, I have some kind of an inventory list, and I know roughly what I have in my collection. And God forbid, if I you know if I died, my wife and kids would know what I paid for something, what it is, and maybe roughly what they could get for it if they had to sell it. But anyways, guys, you know, I appreciate you all so much. Thank you so much for your support. Um, if you will, please just continue to share my videos as you feel and, 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 and want to. And, you know, hit that like button. It's very important. You know, the, the more likes we get on the video, you know, it can help us channels, us smaller channels, you know, get more of an audience and everything. You know, we really appreciate that a lot. Uh, and you'll comment and everything, hit the notification bell. And again, if you haven't already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. But anyways, guys, uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. God bless all of you. And um, I'll be getting back to you soon. So thank you so much.